In this next part, we're going to talk about triangles. And because we've completed angles, triangles is like a great way of, of coming in to the geometric shapes. So a triangle is exactly three angles, right? So it's going to be three rays put together, three lines, and then three angles. Now, um, the word tri comes from the word uh, three, right? And then the root word angles. So three angles, triangle. The angles that make up the triangle are the vertices and then the sides are called edges, but I call them sides. So um, there are a few uh, properties of triangles. So we either look at properties of triangles looking only at their sides or we look at their angles. So let's start with just their sides. So there are three types. We have a scalene, equilateral and isosceles. A scalene is when all sides are not equal. Okay, equilateral means all the sides are equal, meaning that we denote the equal sides by a little line through the sides. And if an equilateral has all three equal sides, What's fun about an equilateral is that all the angles have to be e equal. So each of these angles are 60 degrees. Because you can't have equal sides without some sort of equal angles. That's when the isosceles becomes interesting because isosceles means that only two sides are equal, not three, just two. But because of the two sides that are equals, that makes that two angles have to be equal somewhere. I mean, you can't have two equal sides without having two equal angles. So the base angles of an isosceles triangle are also equal. Okay, so the second part is the types of triangles given by their angles. So now we only look at the angles themselves. So the angles themselves, and notice that because the side, none of the angles that are equal or the sides that are equal I mean, none of the angles, it doesn't say much about the sides, right? So only if the sides are equal, then it tells us something about the angles, right? So here are two sides of an isosceles has two base angles that are equal. An equilateral triangle, meaning the sides are all equal, implies the angles are equal. But if we look at the types of triangles by their angles, there's really not much we can know by the sides unless we knew the angles were the same, then we know the sides are the same, right, the length. So an acute triangle is exactly what you think. It's just all the angles of the triangle are 90 degrees or less, or less than 90 degrees. And obtuse means one of the angles is obtuse. So the one of the angles is larger than 90 but less than 180. The right angle is exactly what you think, that one angle has to be 90 degrees and then the other two can be different. Um, and the sum of three angles in the triangle is 180. So this is really important and you'll know, want to know this for essentially the rest of your life. <laughs> So if I added up all these angles in an acute triangle, that would equal 180. If I added all these angles, even the obtuse, notice how if one is obtuse, notice how acute these angles are, but they still add up to be 180. And the right angle, most of it is taken up by this 90. That means you have to split these so that those two add up also to 90 to get the 180. Okay, so let's take a look at a triangle and let's like, figure out the measure of the missing angles. So I know that this one's 23, 34, 78. Now, I, if I know two out of the three angles, I can find this one by adding these two up and subtracting them from 180. So the first thing I wanna do is find this missing angle. So the first thing I want to do is see that 180 degrees, because that is the triangle. Let me highlight it. We're looking at. We'll start there. So the sum of all interior angles is 180 for a triangle. So that means 180 will be equal to 
23 plus 34 plus this missing one. I guess I can call it maybe A. You can call it anything. I don't want to call it X because X is over here. Okay, so now to find A, we could just subtract those from 180. So we can just go to our calculator and just take 180 and subtract 23 minus 34 and get 123. So this little angle here, I'll erase the little A because I really wanted was the 123. Notice that it is an obtuse angle. It even looked obtuse, right? When we highlighted over it, so we knew it was going to be obtuse. Okay, so once I know now that this is 123, look at this straight angle here. If this is true, then these two have to be supplementary. And that means these two have to add up to equal 180. So I can easily find Y here by simply taking 123 and subtracting it from 180. So let me write a note. These two here are supplementary. And if I add them together, they should be 180. So let's go ahead now and find Y. We'll go ahead and find Y. So 180 is equal to Y plus 123. So if I subtract 123 from 180, I get that the Y angle is equal to 57 degrees. So let me write that over here. OK. Let me box it because that's one of the questions. The last piece is now to find X, right? So now I'm in the same situation as I was in 1i, right? Where if I had, if I add up all these three angles, it should equal 180. Same thing with this other triangle, that 78 and 57 and X should all equal 180. So I can take these two angles and add them up and then take 180 and subtract that sum. So the last part, 3i, would be to find x. OK, so take 180, and that's equal to 78 plus 57 plus x. And so therefore, we could just take um, 180 in our calculator and subtract those other two angles. So minus 78 and minus 57. And we get 45 degrees. So let me box these two. So once again, you're just playing with the idea of angles and that the sum of the angles in a triangle is 180. And even though we have one big triangle, notice that we cut this up um, into two triangles and then found some other angles. So geometry is kind of fun that way. We can cut up shapes and get new shapes and be able to find everything we need for those. So the last part is actually finding a missing angle. So if I have a triangle that has two angles that measure 35 and 75, find the measure of the third angle. I just want you to notice that 35 and 75 degrees are acute angles, which means that we're going to have an acute triangle because um, that third angle has to be an acute angle. So if I did a triangle, let's see. Okay, here's 35 degrees, and then here's 75 degrees. So if we wanted to find, let's say, this missing angle, which is the third angle, call it x, right? It's one of the few times we use x in this class. We know that we'll have 180, that's equal to 75 plus 35 plus x. 
And once again, we can easily solve for x by subtracting these from 180. Now, we could go and try to do it algebraically. I encourage you not to. This isn't an algebra class. I really would like you to do it the way you would do it if you were in a hardware store or if you were decorating your house and trying to figure out how much space you have, right? But we can, so we have 110 plus x, and then you would see that x is equal to 70 degrees. So I could say the third angle is 70 degrees. Remember, we just we didn't have x originally. We just used x as like a placeholder for that angle. Okay, so here, if one of the angles in this triangle is right, and the other one's 57, find the measure of the third angle. So notice if one of the angles is a right angle, then we know that the other two are also acute because you have to split up the 90 degrees, right? So let me draw that one. So this one's 90 degrees and another one measures 57 degrees. So here's the one that's going to be missing. We can also call that x if you want. But it doesn't really matter because the sum of the angles is always 180 in a triangle. So we're still going to use the fact that 180 is equal to 57 degrees plus that right angle 90 degrees plus x. And so I could solve it the way I did above and have 147 degrees plus x on the right and subtract 147 from 180 and get 33 degrees. And so you can see that this one's 33 degrees. Now, of course, we didn't ask for x because we just put it in there as a placeholder. So we would say the third angle is 33 degrees.